the Northeast is particularly an interesting area in terms of the uh, diversity of communities and diversity in terms of the uh, biological uh, world. And I think all of us, uh, are, like all indigenous communities, there is a very close relationship between us and nature. If you look at all the stories uh, that we have in very different tribes of Northeast India, it has got something to do with the stones, with the hills, with the, with the world around us. There is a very strong way in which the connection remains. I can give an example, at least I know of the Thai, Karen communities. When the child is born, they cut the umbilical cord, they keep it in a bamboo and tie it to a tree and say that as this tree goes older, you will also go older. So you don't, if this tree dies, then you will also die. It's that connection, and in that connection of, uh, of uh, nature, the most important item for that, that landscape is water. And indigenous communities use water in a way that, knowing that without water they will all die and the world around them will die. And so they have different methods of, uh, of using water and of conserving it and of being effective. But when it comes to development interventions, uh, the tribals have been so far taken as targets of targets for benefits and not as decision makers. And even the uh, elites who have who have had the reins held the reign of power in our, in respective states in the northeast, uh, they, their approach has been almost like that of uh, the center who have ideas about, you know, their, their own ideas about economic growth and development. It's not like, you know, driven by the needs of the people. And it is that, that development schemes come with the idea that plans and estimates are made in Delhi or Itanagar or Gohati and they just go and ask people, do you like the scheme? And people being polite, they say, yes, yes, we like the scheme. There's been no attempts, very often, of sitting down and first doing your homework. What do these people want? What is their idea of a future? That they're, what is their idea of well-being? In perhaps the first ever public hearing of uh, environmental impact assessment for a you know, hydropower pro project in my district, which I attended, there was this, uh, you know, uh, elderly village council, you know, person. We call them Gaugulas in Arunachal. Say, uh, we have been brought down uh, for this public hearing in, by the company people uh, to talk about compensations, you know, land compensations as land owners. And they are to, they are saying that uh, they will give, uh, you know, employment to each family, you know, a representative from each family. But he said, for how long and what kind of employment my land that is likely to be submerged has sustained my family for so many generations. And even if they give me, give me cash compensation, I would not find another such land you know, outside my village or in another community. They are not going to give me that kind of land. And what kind of a job? Today I am a landowner. Tomorrow my son or my uh, nephew or my grandson would just be a wage earner. You know, from a non-landowning family will become landless and will be just workers in someone's you know uh, farm or uh, kind of company. And he said, I don't want to let my land go. That that is how we believe that our land sustains us more than anything else. Some people, some academicians, like anthropologists or whoever, you know, for their own uh, academic interest, they are trying to free us 
into a time frame. And perhaps they don't want us to evolve. And uh, unfortunately, the world is seeing us through their lenses. I don't think we, as, as a people, we should be trying to judge ourselves by the standards of other people. Exactly. See, we have our own standards, you know? we have our own norms. You know? We should be proud of these norms. But unfortunately, you see, the education we have now, at least now it's better. In my time, I went to a convent school. They would beat me up if I spoke in my mother tongue. I was taught only to speak in English. Maybe because of that beating, I, I speak slightly better in English. But I lost my whole culture. So that's wrong. That is the wrong thing. When we read about history, we read more about the history of the rest of India. How many of us know about the history of the Apatanis and what they do uh, in their world? We know nothing about it. So we, there's a way in which these things have been taken away from us. You know, I think we, we should get back to these things. You know? uh, not to become chauvinistic. It's not to become that I I am the a tribal and I can do anything. No, no. It is to see that you can appreciate diversity if you know yourself first. And then you can build uh, build on, on that uh, on, on that diversity. You know? We forget that sometimes in our traditional systems there are certain people, it could be an old woman who has a lot of knowledge about herbs and we respect that person. So when we are asking for development with identity, we say please before you develop, take note of our identity, build on that. But in doing that, all that is important in development of the identity is that please get my consent before you come and have the scheme before me. And I think if we understand this principle that land is important to me, uh, to me means to my community, that my consent is also important. Uh, and that I need to also live with the other communities, we won't have the sort of conflicts that we have in the Northeast today in many of the areas. They need to balance because the people's uh, rootedness in the landed culture of agroeconomy or horticulture or just being in the forest or just being in the remote uh, villages in, up in the mountains, uh, the life has always been sustained without economy also. But yes, in terms of uh, perhaps uh, assimilation, we need skills, we need uh, exposures. Uh, there is one strong point. We are, in most of the uh, indigenous communities, we are very equal in distribution uh, of our right. We all have our lands. So if we build on that, then we will build a society that is more equal than the rest of India. Development can go and can progress very well when we are all equal. When there's a disparity, I can have uh, four meals a day, build a house, and you have nothing to eat. One day you'll say, why? And you start questioning, and then conflicts will come in. So I think for peace, for harmony, and for our economic development that is sustainable, the traditional societies have the strength. And today, I think uh, they have to focus more on local economy, local you know, uh, resources. So uh, decentralized planning processes have to be uh, immediately, I think, put into process. I think the way forward is uh, let us recognize our, our traditional systems. Let us, let us look uh, closely at the strength of our systems and let us build on them. But let us also recognize that we have our knowledge in a dynamic world may not be perfect for everything. Climate change comes. That we also need science to work with us, but to work with us as equal partners. My knowledge and their knowledge working uh, together is very, very important.